Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I got my beast shirt on. Yeah, because you've been working on the beast lately, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, we're working on a cyber safe deposit box to yeah. take all those archives. And uh, we've actually had several requests for, you know, yeah. stuff that are in those archives. So if anybody needs anything, you know, just contact us through our website or Facebook, yeah. you know, watchtower.exposed, because we've got... Ugh, anything you can think of and even some that you wouldn't even believe Watchtower was connected to. Yeah, but for this particular video um, you might be wondering what May 14th has to do with any significant history with the Watchtower. Well the title, <laughs> you know, Vaccination Against Watchtower. Yeah, Woo! so what we're doing is we're, this video is going to expose the dumbassery of Watchtower on every level possible. I mean they, they keep claiming, oh, we have new light, we have new light, which we have another video coming on that Watchtower. More yep. dumbassery on how, how idiotic you people are. I mean, it's just I, just, I just can't believe that I was really, did when I was a fully indoctrinated Jehovah Witness, please, can I get a witness? Somebody who's known me for the past 42 years as a Jehovah Witness. I want somebody who knows me or who knew me. I don't know, let's... Let's just shout out a name from another congregation. Let's go with David Cote. Was I really this stupid when I was a Jehovah Witness? Honestly. I mean, I... I Gary I, Dean? Gary Dean. I just can't fathom this. So let's just get into what we have. Because this is truly dumbassery. Okay. May 14th, 1796. Um... Jenner's breakthrough on the smallpox vaccine. Now you can Google it, you know, you can go to the historyofvaccines.org and look this up. And this is when he first came up with the concept of vaccines. 1796, okay. my Okay, now just hold on. Now let's take Watchtower's theology of new light. See, we keep getting new light. God keeps giving us new light. Especially as technology advances. Yes. So in the world of vaccines and medical science, on May 14th, 1796, mankind, through science, was given a new light. Breakthrough. A breakthrough. Now, what's interesting on this website, under the history of smallpox, in the first paragraph, the last sentence says... <laughs> It is also the only human disease to have been eradicated by vaccination. Okay, now I'm going to repeat that. Eradicated by vaccination. Now you may be wondering, what does this have to do with Watchtower? 135 years later, here comes the dumbassery. Okay, this is from the 1931 Golden, Golden Age. Golden Age. February 4th. Page 294. I think this is the last paragraph of the article. Vaccinations have never saved a human life. It does not prevent smallpox. <laughs> good food, good water, and sanitary living conditions are the basis of human health. No disease has ever proved this more uh, prominently than smallpox. Is this honestly Watchtower taking taking new light from the medical science science world from eradicating smallpox and vaccinations and totally putting it all in the dark? I mean, they you 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 totally broke that light bulb. In the mind of your members, vaccinations have never saved a human life. Talk about dumbassery. My goodness, I can't believe that I was that stupid to believe this nonsense. And yet, there are Jehovah's Witnesses today that still believe this bullshit that Watchtower prints. I, it just, ugh, it's mind boggling. Am I spitting all over your glasses? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey's riled this morning. Well, the thing well, is, he, 
is you go to this website and they even have the history of smallpox and they say that it was eradicated by vaccination. You know, and then here's Rutherford back in, you know, 1931 saying the vaccine has never saved a human life. Oh my God. Now, here's, here's a little historical perspective. <coughs> Excuse me, because we all know from written history that in the 1800s, the United States of America, and I really um, am not proud to say this, and it really um, saddens me that the military of the United States purposely infected the blankets that they sent to our Native American brethren to eradicate them. And one of the reasons why a lot of the human, a lot of the uh, military people and or the people infecting the blankets were not affected by smallpox is because they already had the vaccine in them. This is how they were in part able to uh, decimate the Native Americans in this continent, which is an absolute tragedy. Yeah. But if this vaccination, this vaccine was not already working at this little point in history, then the United States military would not have carried on germ warfare with the Native Americans. Yeah. But yet, with all of this behind, um, already this had been passed in history, how stupid, see the golden age, this would have been Rutherford, right? Yeah, it was Rutherford. <laughs> the epitome of a dumbass comes out and writes, Vaccation, vaccines have never saved a human life. Well, what was you know was so bad about this is this was new light back in 1931. So how many witnesses did not go get vaccinated for the vaccines that were available in 1931 well, yeah. and died because of this dumbassery? <laughs> yeah. But we have more dumbassery. Oh, great. Okay, now this was kind of profound. Ooh, light bulb went off, epiphany. So I'm, like Mike said, I'm working on the beast and I'm, you know, putting all of this on an external drive for the archives. And I come across a picture of Russ, C.T. Russell, and it says, The Watchers. And I'm looking at this, it's like, they call themselves The Watchers. It's like, okay, I've read the book of e books of Enoch. Well, we've also been watching a lot of documentaries about the Nephilim, um, and things that were going on pre-flood, and this mm. word "watchers" kept popping up. Yeah. Of course, you know we know who they were, having known or having read and done some research on this. But we yeah. found it interesting that Russell started using that term throughout his writings. Yeah, and I mean, I have found it, you know, just littered all through. Thy kingdom come, this is the millennial blue edition of um, Thy kingdom come, which is studies in the scriptures number three. Page 123. A faithful few were thus instructed in the word of truth, filled with its spirit, purified and more fu fully separated from the world, purged of pride and through the discipline of the disappointment of 1844, <laughs> brought to more humble reliance upon God and the foretold tarrying of 30 years developed in the Holy One's patience. Okay, so it's talking about the 144,000. Humility and loving submission until the watchers at the end of the 1335 days, 1874 harvest time. So they're calling themselves the watchers. So, and it's interesting to note that when you go back and read the book of Enoch, this term, the watchers, was applied to those fallen angels. Well, I was going to say, I've got the book of Enoch right here. <laughs> so, when Watchtower, when Russell was using this term and equating themselves, the Bible students, and or even himself as the watchers, who are they really equating themselves to, Jehovah's Witnesses? Well, let's see what the book of Enoch says about the watchers. This is chapter 12, verse 4. Enoch, you scribe of righteousness, go tell the watchers of heaven, who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, and have done as the children of earth do, and have taken to themselves wives. So in the book of Enoch, these watchers were the ones that 
forsook their heavenly position and came down to be with daughters of men so, to have these high-bred children. So these watchers have absolutely corrupted themselves in yeah. God's eyes. Now you've got Charles Taze Russell writing a whole plethora of bullshit that's all corruption, and yet he's equating himself to these watchers. Yeah. Wow, that's scary, Jehovah's Witnesses. Whose side are you people really on? Well, the thing is, is these books of Enoch, I mean, they were translated way back, I think, in the 1800s. And uh, the thing is, is you know Russell had to, you know, why, where did he just come up with this name? You know, it well, isn't in the Bible. Watch Tower. I mean, on it. I mean, honestly, weren't watchers? Weren't these Nephilim supposed to be giants on the earth? Weren't these towers of a man of a humans? Weren't weren't they tower? I mean, even in um, even when the Israelites crossed over into the Promised Land, they said these men are giants. We are like grasshoppers. So if you're a giant, aren't you a tower? So watch tower. I don't know. I'm just speculating here. I'm just throwing as much bullshit back at these guys. Because you know what, Watchtower? If you're going to fling bullshit, by God, so am I. <laughs> well, it usually splatters everywhere. Yeah, that's, that's the problem, Watchtower. When you start throwing bullshit, it goes everywhere. But in all seriousness here, you know, why would Russell call them the Bible students, the watchers? The watchers, when he knows that this is yeah. a term that designated okay, to these fallen so, angels. Okay, so, you know, your watchers, watchtower, okay, I get that. I need to find my thing here. All right, there it is. Mikey's so riled, he's throwing papers everywhere. <laughs> the me? Don't blame me on this. This is Watchtower's fault, damn it. I know. Breathe. breathe. I need some M&Ms. <laughs> okay. Now, this is from the November 1st, 1931 Watchtower. So, there we go. Rutherford again. Page 327. One may say that all Christians are taught of God, and that would be true so far as God's children have believed and followed the truth. But the text under consideration, namely Isaiah 54, 13, clearly and specifically applies to a special class. Prior to the coming of the Lord to the temple, the Holy Spirit operated as a teacher of God's truth. So prior to the Lord coming to the temple, what, 1918, 1919? Yeah. It was the Holy Spirit that was the teacher of God's truth. The promise of the text is not to any individual, but it is made of the children of Zion Ooh. collectively. The children of Zion. Interesting. If one is not born in Zion, the text could not apply to him. Zion is God's organization, and it follows that those who are not of his organization could not be the recipients of the promise made to that organization. And then paragraph 21, it says, Zion, the city or organization of God, was not built until the coming of the Lord to the temple of Jehovah in 1918. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the Lord comes down to the earth and inspects everybody, and they're the only children of Zion, and they're the only ones chosen. Yeah. It's funny that most religions say that. They they, they all, all say that. Say that. All these cults yep. say that. They all say that. So we have more dumbassery. Dumbassery, you're right. April first, nineteen thirty-two, Watchtower, page one hundred one. There was a lot of gems on this one. Um, talking about uh, a scripture in the Bible, and uh, it says this text completely negates negatives the claim that any man produces the message of truth okay any man produces the message of truth okay you know where this is going no, right? i know where this is going right away the fact yeah. that a man is used by the lord as a scribe to write down the words of truth is no reason whatsoever to give credit to the man for the that message of truth now this is the time period when rutherford was still trying to get rid of russell's you know, Bible students and his influence. Yeah, their influence and their teachings and stuff. Because <laughs> it, when Russell died, they really didn't want to accept Rutherford. Yeah, because now Rutherford has to work to change the mindset of 
those people that were still following the teachings of the Watcher. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he has to basically throw Russell under the bus. So, going on, the faithful remnant must and will learn to cease forever from the foolish course of exalting men because of some work done by a man as the instrument of the Lord. Okay, now, couldn't the same thing apply today with the governing body? Absolutely. Absolutely it applies to the governing body. Because when the governing body speaks it, the Jehovah Witness swallows it. See, it's... Jehovah's Witnesses, you've got to absolutely start comprehending how your own literature condemns you. Oh, we have another video to do later regarding <laughs> the same thing in new light, right? Yeah. It is wholly immaterial whether that message be written out and published by one who is a Caucasian or by one who is of the African race. What difference that makes, I have no idea. No, the, the, the yeah. difference is brought out right here. In another golden age, and a question from readers, and I'll get to that in just, okay, just a Okay, so second. let's finish the. See yeah. what I mean? We just have so it's much. Just dumbassery all the way through. Oh, yeah. Whoever the Lord uses is merely an integral part of the great organization of Jehovah, and all honor and credit is due to Jehovah and none to man. Then why do they think the great governing body in their prayers and in the interviews, I mean, even in the May broadcast. Oh, thanks to the governing body who gives us our spiritual food. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, they, they just can't see what a bunch of dumbasses they're being made to be. It would be impossible for any of us to be wholly devoted to Jehovah God and to take any other course than giving honor and glory to God. God has set the members of the body of Christ according to his pleasure, and there is assigned to each one a duty to perform, and each member is a highly honored of the Lord by reason of being in his service in whatsoever capacity. But it is wrong for members of the body to exalt one above the other. So what about the other 144,000 that um, are down here and the governing bodies up here? But, but Watchtower did exalt one above the other question from readers well i wasn't done with this one. oh okay then finish there's on. more okay <laughs> not one of the remnant on earth is perfect but all recognize that it is god's arrangement to have someone give directions and if the one placed in that position makes mistakes makes mistakes the lord himself will overrule his mistakes <laughs> in his own good way or correct this in whatever manner his wisdom requires only those who strive lawfully will enter the kingdom, and striving lawfully means to work according to the rules the Lord has laid down, and those who oppose the work which the Lord is doing and having his witnesses to do, and who attempt to work in a different way, come clearly within the class designated by Jesus as they that do iniquity. Such the Lord by his angels gathers out that there may be be complete unity in his organization. Okay. What year was that article written? 1932. Go back and read that again. The Lord himself will do what? Overrule his mistakes in his own good way or correct. Okay. So in, Feb in the February 4th Golden Age, 1931, how did the Lord correct this mistake? Vaccinations have never saved a human life. You wrote this in 1931, and then you wrote this in 1932. A year later, the Lord himself will correct the mistakes. The Lord did nothing, Watchtower. Took a dumbasses. <laughs> okay, so now getting now going back, back to, to the African Americans. Where you stated that, um, talking about exalting one above the other. Now, yeah. I'm not sure what year this was printed, because when we downloaded this, we don't, don't have the year. Do you happen to remember? Which golden age this is from? Oh, I forgot to what, yeah, know what year. Whatever golden age it is, it's on page 702. Maybe we can put it in the link of something down below. Question from readers. Question. <laughs> is there anything in the Bible that reveals the origin of the Negro? It doesn't stop there. Answer. Okay. It is... Okay, go ahead. You got I'm sorry to no, interrupt. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. I interrupt you enough, so this yeah. is... This is the 1929 Golden Age, 1929. July 24th, page 702. Okay, so they wrote this in 1929, and in 1932 they said that no one exalts one another, but they, they did it earlier. Okay, 
Answer, it is generally believed that the curse which Noah pronounced upon Canaan was the origin of the black race. Now, Watchtower, you should have just left that alone. But you couldn't, could you? I can't believe they actually printed this. I mean, well, I had to, to read it twice. Well, listen to what, yeah, exactly. Speak about dumbassery, talking about dumbassery. Certain it is that when Noah said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall, be, uh, shall he be unto his brethren. Uh-oh. He pictured the future of the colored race. They have been and are a race of servants. But now in the dawn of the 20th century, we are all coming to see this matter of service in its true light and to find that the only real joy in life is in serving others, not bossing them. There is, there is no servant in the world as good as a colored servant and the joy that he gets from rendering faithful service is one of the purest joys there is in the world. Wow! I wonder if something like this ought to be uh, brought to the NAACP to show how racist these Jehovah's Witnesses are and they still are. Well, that's why I couldn't even read that article. I mean, I couldn't even bring myself it's, to even read it. My my goodness. I mean, this is this is one of these occasions where Mike would like to let the F-bomb fly. I mean, what the watchtower? I mean, they have been and are a race of servants? Wait a minute. How did slavery begin in the United States? Did those Africans do this voluntarily because they're a race of servants? Or were they forced into this service? This is how ignorant Jehovah's Witnesses are. They just, but yet, you know, they'll all say, oh, but we have new light. We have new light. Back then, idiots, this was new light. Right? This was in the golden age. There is no servant in the world as good as a good colored servant. And the joy, the, the joy. Wait a minute. Go back and watch The Roots by Alex Haley, right? Go back and go back and watch them and ask if Kunta Kinte enjoyed having his foot cut in half because he desired freedom more than he desired servitude. What a bunch of idiotic, oh, these guys. This, this is what aggravates me to no end, is that these modern day Jehovah's Witnesses can go back and read the same thing that we're reading and say, oh, isn't it nice that we've changed our ways? Bullshit. You guys haven't changed your ways because you still feel that same hatred towards apostates. Those that have woken up and found their freedom from this bullshit. And yet you cannot understand and comprehend the freedom that we found because you want to be attached to an organization of men who mandates a set of rules and you're gladly kissing their asses as you're following it. It's a good thing your blood pressure is so good, huh? Yeah, you know what? Okay, I'm glad you brought that up because I went to the chiropractor again last night and this was at the end of a day of putting in a long, hard day of work. And I mean, I worked hard yesterday. My blood pressure was 118 over 68. So Watchtower, again, I can keep this up all day long. <laughs> so do you want to, so do you want to hear more dumbassery? Oh no, yeah. Well yeah, go ahead because my blood pressure can take this dumbassery. Of course you got tea. Yeah, I don't know. Caffeine medicine. Yeah, I might my tea might be spilling all over the place now. <laughs> I was gonna say we need to cut down your caffeine yeah, intake. Maybe. Okay, so I wanna thank Lillian for thank sending you. me yeah. this information. And um, <clears throat> what she sent me was a page from a book that is uh, The Four Presidents of the Watchtower, written by a, uh, Edmund 
Gruss, G-R-U-S-S. -S. And um, I think I'm going to buy that book. But anyway, on page, um, let's see. I don't see what page this is. Okay, anyway, under, it must be in the references, because it's under number 77, Jehovah's Witnesses and the Divine Purpose. On um, point number three, considerable creature worship. So I was like, ah, I happen to have that book. So I went and got my Divine Purpose book and looked this up on page 91. And it's under the chapter, Reorganizing for Active Service, chapter 14, page 91. <laughs> Okay, cut down on oh, the caffeine. Wait a, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have a question. What year was this written? This is from. What year was this published? I believe it's in the fifties, nineteen fifty-nine. Okay, so if in the nineteen thirties it was clear that Jehovah had an organization and it was actively spreading kingdom truths, then why are they retitling this reorganizing? <gasps> What did you have to reorganize in the 50s Watchtower? I mean, why did God and his benevolent wisdom get you started in the 30s as his organization and now he's reorganizing? Something doesn't make sense. Jeez. Okay. So, uh... Did I distract you? Yes. Good. <laughs> oh, I love you, dear. <laughs> you dork. Anyway... <laughs> Um, it starts with paragraph one. Now, this book is very weird for a Watchtower book because it has like this conversation that has taken place during Bible studies between, you know, a witness and those who are just learning the truth. And it has this guy, uh, when the society began to be freed for per further preaching work following World War I, they soon realized they had been held in spiritual bondage too in many ways. So is Watchtower admitting they were in spiritual bondage? Apparently. Rutherford mm. didn't, uh, Russell didn't think that, did he? Because Russell thought that he was a slave of God. Yeah. Now this is why you can no longer find this book on the CD-ROM because of what is in here. I'll tell you, this book is full of gems. There were many false doctrines and practices that had not yet been cleaned out of the organization. Hmm. So now we're going to go down to paragraph two and see what some of these uh, false doctrines and stuff that had to be cleaned out. Besides, many were putting emphasis on so-called character development in the belief that there were certain saving qualities in their self-merit. And there was considerable creature worship in the organization. <laughs> Furthermore, such pagan holidays as Christmas were being celebrated, and even the symbol of the cross was used as a sign of Christian devotion. Okay, so let me see if I got this right. Witnesses today say that the witnesses back then, the Bible students, in 1918, were taken into spiritual exile because of by culture. Christendom, and they had to be cleansed, and then Jesus came and inspected them and chose them. Even though they were doing the exact same things as Christendom, he chose them. I don't buy it. Okay, so they go through this long list of they were doing some things that were um, traditions adopted by Christendom, had slipped by unnoticed by the brothers. <laughs> Unnoticed? Really? <laughs> Slipped by? Unnoticed? <laughs> now, this is when it gets to the good part, because this is the second column, which would be the third paragraph. These dedicated servants began to recognize their mistakes and make a public confession of their wrongdoing in their effort to seek Jehovah's forgiveness and be restored to his favor which they realized had temporarily been lost. They repented of their former co course, expressed the desire to change their ways, and prayed, prayed for Jehovah's forgiveness. Are you about done? Because I'm just itching to blast this apart. <laughs> okay, well wait yeah. till I get done okay. with the good part. The, oh, you mean that wasn't the good part? Yeah. I mean, because you know, r right off the bat, the first thing that comes to mind is um, the UN. You got involved again with the UN. Um, you are not openly confessing your child abuse and pedophile uh, pedophilia problem. 
So for the very things that you were confessing back then, you're now hiding. I, I, I don't. So how could you still believe that God's blessing you? Well, it gets better because they do a list of their compromises and mistakes. Oh, really? And they admit this in their okay. own publication. So we'll stop in between each one and let Mikey rant. Okay, they recognized a compromise had been made by cutting out pages 247 to 253 of the finished mystery in order to please those who had assumed the position of censor. So you mean they're now telling half-truth and lies because they cut out pages of one of their, you know, works that was inspired of God? Well, the government, you know, censored that. That's why Rutherford was sent to prison. And because and those it others. was sedition. Yeah. Another compromise was made as revealed in the Watchtower of June 1st, 1918. You oh, guys are going to love this I can't this wait one. to hear this one. Yeah. Because I just happen to have that magazine and can fill in the missing parts. Oh, you mean you can fill in the dot, dot, dot? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Watchtower, this is way too easy, dudes. Way too easy. I know it. Okay, now this is the quote from the 1918 Watchtower. In accordance with the resolution of Congress of April 2nd and with the proclamation of the President of the United States of May 11, it is suggested that the Lord's people everywhere may make May 30th a day of prayer and supplication. Now, what's the significance of May 30th? Well, that was the day that they were supposed to do prayer and supplication. But so. but isn't it also Memorial Day, too? Yeah. See? So, like Memorial I said, I day. just happen to have this own old Bond volume. They were involved with patriotism, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. Now, in the June 1st, 1918 Watchtower, on page 6271, down at the bottom, May 30th for prayer and supplication. Yep. Memorial Day. <laughs> See, now, in the 1959 Divine Purpose book, they stopped after a day of prayer and supplication. Okay, so let's now, see so what the watch fill in the blanks? Yeah, that's missing. To show they were not politically neutral. Okay, God was graciously pleased to cause this nation to be formed and to grow under the most favorable conditions in the world for the preservation of liberty, civil, and religious. This is the land divinely shadowed with wings, overshadowed by the prov providential watch care of God's word, where God has lifted up an ensign on the mountain kingdom, where he has blown the trumpet message of the truth. And they go on to talk about how great the United States are is <laughs> countless blessings have flowed to devout people through the wise provisions of the laws of the United States. To the wise provision to the laws of the United States. Oh my goodness. Blessings whose influences have been felt to the remotest corners of the earth. Wherever even a spark of love for God-given freedom might be fanned into a glow. And they just, yeah. Oh, look, right there. Born in Zion. <laughs> there, anyway, there we, yeah, born in Zion. See, what you've done, Watchtower, is you feel this is a blessing from God because of the Constitution of the United States of America and the freedom of religion. It is your religious right to practice human sacrificing disguised under the blood doctrine. Yeah, Let's just read that whole couple of sentences. To God of that class... Who, when in the age to come the restitution host shall be numbered, shall be found to have been born in Zion. And then they have Psalms 87, 5 and 6. Taken out of the world and given in a figure as humanity's present to their God to be forever sons and servants of the Most High. So blah, 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 blah. So, back to the divine purpose and now what they have to say about that article. Yeah. The expressions that followed in this announcement did not display the proper neutrality of the Christian, and while the hope was presented that blessings to mankind would come through the restitution promised by God, still the concluding words of the announcement may have left doubt in the minds of many not fully acquainted with their strictly scriptural responsibility. And then they quote the last paragraph of that. You just read, yeah. It says, Let there be praise and thanksgiving to God for the promised glorious outcome of the war and the breaking of the shackles of autocracy, the freeing of the captives, 
and the making of the world safe for the common people. Blessings all assured by the word of God to the people of this country and of the whole world of mankind. I know what that word says, and I know what it means. I just can't remember how to pronounce it. <laughs> okay, so that was the quote from well, the 1918. Yeah, finish reading this right here. Well, I was just going to say, yeah. so now this is what yeah. they end that section with. A further display of lack of appreciation of the singleness of purpose to which a Christian must be devoted was their engaging in enterprises of a non-religious nature. Wow. And we all know about the miracle we and that um, radionics machine. Radionics. Yeah. I mean, they were just in all of the Solon uh, catalog. Yeah, but see, nothing's actually changed because... They never separated themselves from the government because they joined the United Nations. Um, they never separated from the um, being involved with non-religious activities because all you have to do is download their portfolio and you see that they've got stocks and bonds in the same companies that make war weapons. That is a non-religious entity and yet they're, they're heavily invested in these things. They're, they're, they're nothing but a bunch of false prophets which they admit themselves in an upcoming video, Jehovah's Witnesses, your organization admits themselves that they're false prophets. Well, I have a nothing's changed. I have a question for Jehovah's Witnesses and their apologists. If you cannot believe that they were that they joined the United Nations back in 1993 in the United States here and still are members in Europe, if you cannot believe that then all you have to do is go back to this literature, you know. And if you can't find the 1918, you know, Watchtower, I'll be more than happy to send you a link. Yeah, don't don't call someone at Watchtower because they don't know the answer either. All you have to do is go to New Light 2075 when he calls Watchtower on the wrong dates of the Memorial 2016. Though those guys that printed these articles don't even have a clue that this information exists, and yet they wrote it themselves. Yeah. Talk about dumbassery. Well, the thing is, is what I was going to say, is if you find it hard to believe that they were members of the UN, then just go back and read this, and Contact this shows us. that they were, you know, bless, you know, basically, God bless the war, that, you know, we will have our freedoms after this. It's like, that is not... Neutral, but isn't that but isn't that what in you know during our time in Watchtower? How many Watchtower articles did we study when they condemned the Catholic Church for blessing the troops before going off to battle during World War II? And yet Watchtower right here in this same article is doing the same damn thing hypocrites yeah. hypocrites And it's funny because whoever owned this bond volume before had a bookmark right in you know this part um you know that talks about you know war yeah thanksgiving to god for the promised glorious this. outcome you're blocking my view i know <laughs> thanksgiving to god for the promised glorious outcome of the war so I... they're praying for you know the blessings for a good god. outcome of yeah. the war ay 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 I got a pounding headache. I can't even read this person's writing. As the storms of life gather around. And sincere? Is that sincere? No. Increases? Increases in fury involving all classes. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so I think that's enough of dumbassery. No, and we've got uh, the next two videos we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking. So, Jehovah's Witnesses, pay attention. We're going to be showing how you people destroy the value of your own illustrations and how you can qualify swallowing the poison. And also, um, what was the other one we're going to talk about? We just mentioned it here. Um, you forgot already? I huh? forgot already. Yeah, the train's <laughs> left the station again. Well, we also have uh, Jack... Holy asked us to do some yeah. comments on his judicial hearing, so we've got that, and we've got a big nails and coffin too. Yeah. So, coming soon. Yes. <laughs> this weekend. Yeah, hopefully. So we hope you all have a wonderful day, and uh, thank you for listening to our rant about uh, dumbassery.
And well, happy these... smallpox vaccination day. Yeah, time. yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> happy smallpox vaccination day. Yep. <laughs> I, I did. I tell you, this is this is, you you know what I can equate this to? Watchtower shooting fish in a barrel. It's just that simple anymore. It truly is. <laughs> God truly has blessed you with dumbassery. The new word of the week. <laughs> yeah. Is that a noun or a verb? I don't give a crap what it is. It works either way. <laughs> Well, thank you for listening, and we hope you all have a wonderful day. <laughs> Bye. Bye.